Late one summer evening in Broken Bow, Nebraska, a weary truck driver pulled his rig into an all-night truck stop. He was tired and hungry, and the waitress had just served him uh, when three tough-looking, leather-jacketed motorcyclists, Hells Angels types, uh, descended to give him a hard time. Not only did they verbally abuse him, but one grabbed his hamburger off his plate, and another took a handful of his fries. And the third picked up his coffee and began to drink it. How did, the truck, how did the trucker respond? How would you respond? Well, this trucker did not respond as one might expect. Instead, he calmly rose, picked up his check, walked to the front of the room, put the check and his money on the cash register, uh, and went out the door. Uh, the waitress followed him to put the money in the till and stood watching out the door as the big truck drove away in the night. When she returned, one of the cyclists said to her, Well, he, he's not much of a man, is he? And she replied, I don't know about that, but... He sure isn't much of a truck driver. He just ran over three motorcycles on his way out. <laughs> I don't know if you have road rage or I don't know if you have your thing, but sometimes with people, uh, it just feels good uh, to get even. Uh, in, in the movie Still Magnolias, uh, there, there's like, that's a great movie. And you have Kathy Bates who goes to the grocery store and she pulls up and someone just takes her spot. And so then she throws it in drive, and then she rams her car into that car and just pulls it to pieces. And the, and the young girl runs out of the grocery store and she says, Sorry, honey, I'm older and I have more insurance. Sometimes it's really good to get even. But I think God has something else to say about that. Look in your Bible, Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 and 42, is where we're going to be today. One of the themes from the weekend, this message is not from that, but it was what happens whenever you lose it? What happens when you lose control? What happens whenever you just kind of let go of it? Just go on. Some of you, whenever you hear stories like that, you might be like, well, right on. Good. They deserved it. Tell me the next one, right? That's where we live. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. You've heard it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for two. But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And the whatsoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain too. And give to him that ask thee, and from him that would borrow thee, turn not away. <laughs> Wait a minute, I want to get, I don't, don't get mad, get even, right? That's where I live. Or you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. No. And then the, what the Declaration of Independence says, hey, look, I got, I got rights, I got life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so uh, we're, we're, it's about my rights. I have the right to be mad. I have the right to be angry. I have the right to get even. We got civil rights, women's rights, children's rights, workers' rights, victim rights, defendants' rights, all kinds of rights all over the place. I got the right. We want what we think is ours, and if we're willing to, we'll fight for it. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is where you and I live. We camp there. You cut me off in traffic, and I'm going to go around you 90 miles an hour. I'm going to roll down my window, and I may or may not, depending on which day of the week it is, give you a gesture that is not verbalized. I may throw some hands around. I may even do something that I shouldn't, right? That's right there on the circle. So that's where we're at. Coworker gets mad at us, says something cross, and we're just like, what oh, yeah, man? And then just kind of you go in this fire explodes, right? I know you've experienced that. Sermon on the Mount that we've been going through with Matthew, where Jesus directly deals with the issue of rights, of getting even, and how do we respond when we are wrong. And I'd ask you for a question. Think about a time in your life whenever that happened. And then how did the how did going over three motorcycles really work out for you? 
How did that attitude help? Did it make you really bitter? Or is there really a better way to be? Well, I say there is, and I don't say there is because I'm trying to sell my next book that's going to hit the New York Times bestseller list. I'm not trying to give you your best life now. I'm trying to give you what Jesus says today. Jesus is not saying anything new. I told you this when we've been going through Matthew. You know, you hear him say, but I say unto you. You've heard it said, but I say unto you. So this is not a new thing in which he's saying. Jesus is clarifying what he already said in the Old Testament. Exodus 21 and 24, Leviticus 24 and 20, Deuteronomy 19 21. This is all just still um, what he has said before. Right? The idea that he gave him that time, he would say, he would say, if someone was wrong, uh, then they would meet like a, it would almost be like a property dispute, and so they would work that out, saying, "Well, he took this property from you. I'm going to take this from him. We're going to make that right." It was a, it was a law kind of a thing. It had nothing to do with personal retaliation. And so, if it has nothing to do with personal retaliation, then we don't get personally. Our desire to personally retaliate is checked by the very law, God's law, especially for the believer. And so how did you, well, well okay, but, but how do we get here? If, the, if this was something that they knew, then why would Jesus have to say it again? You ever wonder that? You know, Jesus spends a lot of time repeating things which they already should have known. He spends a lot of time going back over things and teaching it again. Why? Why would he have to reteach that? Well, if I change my own version to the way I like it, then it needs to be, it has to be corrected back to the original, original, right? So that's what Jesus does. Their own desires have changed everything that allowed them to go do some kind of religious tradition uh, and worship and then go live another way that was completely opposite to the way God wanted them to be. And so literally, you probably had Jews punching each other out in the marketplace over tomatoes and cantaloupes. You know. Why? Because they had changed everything and made it into their own idea of what they wanted it to be. Wouldn't it be great if we could all just change what God said and made it just the way we wanted to be? You wouldn't be offended and I wouldn't be offended. You'd have your version and I'd have mine. It would just be great. Wait a minute. I heard that on the news yesterday at 530. That's the world we live in, right? Everybody wants to make their own version. Everybody wants to make their own truth. Nobody wants to, there, there's not really an absolute, right? But there is. There is an absolute. And it's God's way. Everything that starts out with us will always end up sliding. Why? Because it's in our hearts, it's in our minds, it's who we are. Right? And so we need Jesus. We need the Lord to teach us. We need the Lord to show us. And he does. But I say unto you that resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, verse 39, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, take away thy coat, let him have thy, thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compare thee to go a mile, go with him too, twain. Give to him that ass thee, from him that would borrow thee, turn not away. Does this raise any red flags in your personal life? This means that I have to be kind of like this giving person who's like nice, uh, who like people like uh, encourages people, who's not a jerk. Uh, I mean, it's just like hello. It's it's all there, and he means what he says. He's calling us, y'all, to a higher purpose in our lives. The way we live matters. What we say matters. What we do. Matters. That was all over the weekend. You can't sit in, sit in church on Sunday and then go home and then blow up on your wife and act like you're so super spiritual. That's called hypocrisy. Right? That's a word for it. Same thing for some. We can't, we can't say one thing here and then do another over there. It doesn't, it's not. It doesn't work. He 
It doesn't call us to retaliate. It doesn't call us to hit someone across the jaw. It doesn't call us to fight with them. But he calls us to be compassionate. And compassion, get this, is not acceptance. I can be totally and completely compassionate for someone, and I can absolutely not expect their choices, accept their choices or their lifestyle. At all. I get your suffering. I get your pain. I get your experience. I get what you're saying. But that never ever can take away from what the truth that God says it is. Get that. That's all through the news. That's through the textbooks those kids get at school. It does not change truth. Compassion is not acceptance. Write it down highlight it above the letter. The Bible teaches that we're clear to, to stand for the truth, to speak the truth, to stand for the oppressed, right? If there's a human trafficking bill that's going through the Senate right now, praise God, it's well overdue. Things like that should be happening all the time. Christians ought to be changing the culture all the time. We do stand against evil. We do, we do the things which we're supposed to do. But you can't be you understand how that works. You can't be passionate about human trafficking, which is modern day slavery, and then go punch your neighbor because at three o'clock in the morning his dog won't shut up. That makes sense. That says make sense. That saying. Four of you, thank you. Okay, so I mean, you can't say this and then you can't do that. That doesn't make sense. That makes sense to you, not to God. Right? Just kind of add that in there and clarify it. Selfish. Oh, selfish. When we're selfish like that, when we want our own way, when we just uh, want to sidestep, we sow the own seeds. Destruction, if you want to think of it that way. Anger and hatred and wrath, that didn't start there. It's always an increasing degree. It started somewhere else, right? Uh, people don't just get divorced uh, because she didn't make the bed that way. You follow me? And if, and if they did, well, that's just them. Right? People don't. Uh, Fill in the blank with anything, right? We live in a world in which someone offends us and we say, man, I wish she would. Right? And we rear back and that, that thumb kind of comes together, even in our words, or our chest gets big, or our blood pressure goes up, it's kind of like preaching. You know, that the face becomes red and we get excited. You know? Maybe think about it this way. My mom used to say, uh, my mom used to say, you're getting too big for your bridges. Mom ever tell you that? Moms remember that. That's a good mom's name. Right. Or she would say, don't let your mouth override your rear. Right? It's pride. We want to be vindicated. We want to just have our way and have our say. And when we're taking the damage up, oh man, Katie Barbador, I can't believe you would do that to me. Preacher from this weekend, I deserve better. Do you know who I am? I am James Bryant Simmons, the first. It's fine to giggle, right? We don't deserve. we deserve, we did not get because of Christ. We follow me because of mercy. And so I cannot then tell people that you, I deserve this because of the blank. Right? No, deserve it. Our rights, I'm not talking about your constitutional right to vote, but I'm talking about as an individual. individual. Our rights don't get to trample, trample on it.
We want to defend ourselves and be vindicated. When we are coerced into doing something that we don't want to do, uh, the idea of, of standing up to that is kind of, oh, whatever, we kind of, kind of change it. When we feel we're being taken advantage of or, or, or being willing to go along with that, it's just anyone's best interest, we think. We just kind of let it go. Right? Because it's not about uh, me personally. Right? So we give it. It'd be neat. God calls us to mercy and compassion. In every circumstance. I cued him to do that. Y'all missed it the other day. I was preaching. It was really good. You know, heaven came down. And she kind of glory shut the lights and the door just flew open. It was awesome. Maybe God will do it again today. What purpose does turning the other cheek serve? And why would Jesus call us to live that way? Why? It's okay when you see the Bible, when you read it, and you look at it and go, why? You know? Because the answer's there. Okay, because um, Jesus actually, when, when he lived his life, did the very same thing. You know, on the way that people are hurling insults at him and everything else. Jesus wasn't, you know, flipping the bird or saying the words all the way up to the cross. He was just was quiet. He was a servant all the way through the picture. Do you understand? He says that, but he's the Lord. He's God. He can do that. Yeah. But you're saved. You have the Holy Spirit in you, so you have the same ability. You can't do it perfectly. You're going to fail at it, right? But you don't get to let yourself off the hook. Understand? He desires for others that we look at them <coughs> through his eyes. Eyes of compassion and eyes of love. So that's the neighbor with loud dogs. That's the people across the street. That is the people that I work with. That is everything else. Because my life is the life of a mission nature. Right? Rights are God-given. I didn't earn it. Right? And so there's a forever war in our hearts between the mind and the mind, and our minds between the flesh. Uh, no, no, I'll show up here. And the Spirit of God over here. Uh, we, read, we, read, we read Galatians where it talks about, you know, uh, in the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, and then you have to the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts is against the Spirit, the Spirit is against the flesh. There's this kind of tug of war going on all the time, contrary to one another. Um, but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. And so there is this real living that happens. But it only happens whenever you and I let God do the needs to do in our lives. Two questions. Is anybody brought closer to God by you asserting your own rights? Is anyone brought closer to the kingdom of God by your retaliation? By your moment of the free motorcycles? It's funny as that is. We will never win people to Christ. Hear this. By beating them up. <clears throat> we weren't going that way. There were some selfless people in the church that I grew up that cared enough to do the extra to make sure that I heard. There were there were parents in Jen's life that probably didn't feel like going to church every every time or being in church that cared enough to have her there where she heard the gospel. She got saved. You follow my my leading here, right? There is a higher purpose in our lives than people doing us wrong and us holding grudges. God has a purpose. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. And so every Christian, get this, lives in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in them. It's a thing that, that, that sounds off and says, hey, you can't be here, or hey, you can't do this, or stop what you're doing because it's wrong. That's the Holy Spirit, right? I can camp here and I can teach that day and night. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. Right? I don't need to be jealous that Jim Bob gets a brand new F-250. 
I'm great that God decided to bless him in a way that he was able to do that. I, His purpose is to show His grace through His people. His purpose is to touch lives and hearts by His mercy. His purpose is to develop our character so that we are, we're conformed to Christ. <coughs> Remember, I said it earlier in Matthew that being a kingdom citizen is a choice. Every day. And so the choice search your rights and you can pound your chest and then you're never this and you're never that. Oh. We humble ourselves and we each other's. You can retaliate or you can show compassion. <clears throat> and so how do you respond to wrongdoing? Has it caused you grief or has it been a blessing? Are you bitter or are you better? Anger and hatred, are they there or have you experienced compassion for others <clears throat> who are struggling? It's really a matter of the heart. So it's like this. Examine your cheeks. Touch your cheeks. Good. If your cheeks are beaten, you're able to take criticism, take insult, and allow God just to do that. So that's the right way to be. And if the teeth, those around you, are missing, then you're doing a whole lot more with this than you've done with this. Does that make sense? Whatever that is, change it. Right. He's our Lord. He saved us. He's changed us. He's transformed us. And we need to let him do that. 
will you let them do that? Is the question. Tomorrow, today, wherever. And so for the lost person, you can't you can't do any of this without God. You can't let someone wrong you without God. You can't be compassionate to others without God. It's always going to be sliding. It's always going to be one purpose. And so if that's you today, let God come into your life and change that. Christ. One of the greatest blessings of being a child of God, being saved by Christ, is being able to let things go and be forgiven so that you can forgive. That boy that was in that balcony, years later, as a grown person, knelt with that deacon and forgave him for hurting his daddy. That's the pattern of our lives that needs to be there. And I pray that you want it to be. Let's stay in the great fermentation as well. Good There's something that I needed to say uh, when I first came here. If you leave your Bible open whenever someone has an invitation and you set it to your side, it's not a distraction. But what happens is whenever someone issues an invitation, typically they stand up and then they're closing it and then they crank that zipper. And if you've got 30 zippers going on at once, it's a distraction. It leads away from whatever that moment was. So set it to the side. Listen. Listen. Thank you. 